Okay, so the second talk this morning will be by George Elliott, who will try to classify an unclassifiable C star algebra. Uh, uh, his title is Breaking the Classification Barrier. <clears throat> oh, well, um, it's, it's um, an honor to, to, to uh, be invited to speak at the Fields Institute workshop. And uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm grateful to the organizers uh, for organizing such an interesting workshop. And uh, well, uh, and incidentally, for uh, incidentally for inviting me, I, I'm not an organizer. I'm a, I'm a member of the. Um, I've, I've been kicked upstairs. I'm a member of the um, scientific um, committee, scientific advisory committee. Um, well, um, the the um, the title is supposed to remind people of um, of maybe um, 50, 50, 60, 70 years ago, uh, breaking the sound barrier. <coughs> and um, uh, there's, a, there's also the around the same time, interestingly around the same time, uh, the time barrier um, was, was broken, uh, the four minute mile. Now in, in this country that doesn't even exist anymore. But, um, uh, the minutes, minutes exist. Okay, right. Okay. But um, um, <clears throat> well, I I um, I put a I, I take uh, some time uh, in in speaking of time I I take some time in composing an abstract and uh, and judging from my own experience. I mean, uh, reading abstracts, uh, it doesn't get read. So I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it for for you. It'll save, it'll save you the trouble. Um, <clears throat> OK, breaking the classification barrier. So far, only simple c star algebras with radius of comparison 0 uh, have been classified. Well, that's that's uh, exaggeration. Lots of, um, oh, no, I, mean, I guess I, this means among the simple c star algebras with the, only the radius of comparison zero case has been classified. Yeah, lots of uh, of uh, uh, results for non-simple algebras of, of sorts. Uh, certainly, the stable rank one simple c star algebras constructed by Vilsen can have any radius of comparison if the seed space on which the Vilsen construction is based. And what what is the Vilsen construction? Um, well, you have. Um, a C star algebra A with unit, important to have a unit. So um, um, the, the inter an interesting question how to, since the, the, uh, in the um, case of radius of comparison zero, the, um, uh, it's, it's been irrelevant whether the algebras have a unit or not. Um, in the case of high, higher radius of comparison, you look at uh, an algebra A on the one hand, and um, you look at two by two matrices over A tensor A. Okay, and you can map um, <coughs> A into A tensor A. And, and there are two uh, uh, straightforward ways of mapping it. You can map, um, uh, well, you map the, if you, uh, two, 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 by way, two ways of mapping A into just a single A tensor A. But if you, <coughs> have uh, two by two matrices, then you can map it into A tensor one, zero, one tensor A. So the element um, little a maps into um, little a tensor one, zero, zero, one tensor little a. And um, you, see, you see you get inductive limit of matrix algebras from A, 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 H algebra, diagonal maps. <coughs> so if as a follow-up to the Esper Villison's uh, work, um, it was shown that such an algebra always has stable rank one. It's um, unital AH and um, diag with what are called diagonal maps. Um, this has been generalized to ASH algebras too, but it, it's, a bit, it's a little harder to say what um, diagonal maps are. So the, um, uh, what is, um, uh, happening, it seems, is that the um, the the the, uh, the universe of um, stable rank one algebras 
beyond the um, classically classifiable ones um, uh, seems to be opening up, beginning to open up. And uh, so uh, <coughs> if, if the seed space on which the, so if A is commutative, uh, then um, that was what the case that Wilson looked at. And then you have the spectrum in a compact house door space. <coughs> we're, in a set, we're in a separable situation, don't remember, don't forget. Okay, well, um, that, so the X is, is uh, Wong Yu suggested calling the X the seed space. And, um, okay, <coughs> this is the spectrum of the commutative, uh, uh, what we might call the A of the seed algebra, because it, of course, what you do then is you repeat it. And this will ne never be a simple algebra, uh, but, um, uh, you no, know, if A is simple, it'll be simple, but if A is commutative, and not one dimensional, then it, you won't get a simple algebra. Uh, but um, it, it, you then would do what, what you might call adding point evaluations, a well, well known process for the inductive limits of matrix algebras over spaces to make it simple. And you don't have to add very many. It's important not to add too many, or if you, if you add too many points, then uh, it'll, uh, the, the radius of comparison will. Uh, drop down to zero, but uh, if you add um, enough to make it simple, but um, and and a, a little more, then you can get an arbitrary radius of comparison, including um, infinite. Um, so um, <coughs> if the uh, the result that um, uh, well recently uh, I'm going to be talking a lot about res the results of uh, of um, I'll say Zhuang Yu and company because he, he's had uh, very successful uh, results, uh, sometimes alone and sometimes in collaboration with different groups. Um, um, if, if, so if, if the seed space on which the Villison construction is based is a finite dimensional cube, and, and um, usually for, for, for the for some of the results in the paper with Zhuang, uh, we um, fix the seed space, it's just fixed. But in the case of a cube, we can simultaneously uh, allow it to be any uh, finite, uh, finite dimensional cube or any, well, any dimensional cube, any finite dimensional cube, any product of one dimensional cubes. And, um, and the, but then um, now naturally, You've got to keep track of the orders of the matrix algebras, but if you put enough matrix algebras, enough different orders of matrix algebras, like M3, lots of M3s and M5s and so on, then the K0 group will end up being just the rational number. So let's, let's, let's not worry about the K0 group. And the K1 group will be zero. <coughs> and um, it turns out the only uh, um, remaining, the only invariant, you have to go beyond K0 and uh, K1, obviously, then. Uh, you have to look at the radius of comparison, which means uh, looking at the Quint semigroup. Now you might say, why don't you have to look at the whole Quint semigroup? Well, for one thing, the, the trace simplex, which the Quint semigroup uh, incorporates, the, the trace simplex um, is, uh, is, is fixed, okay? If, as soon as the radius of comparison is non-zero, then the, um, the trace simplex of the Villison algebra is going to be um, uh, always the same. Okay, and it's uh, uh, point points for guessing what it is, um, <coughs> and um, and so that means the uh, you just it's a numerical parameterization if you like, uh, uh, which is unusual or just um, the radius of comparison. <coughs> Not uh, of course the <coughs> um, well. The, the question of whether the classification is is, is uh, smooth or not. Well, I guess it's like UHF algebras. It, uh, it, uh, um, I haven't actually considered that, but I suppose that's possible for these particular um, uh, uh, group of seed spaces. Okay, so um, <coughs> 
in particular, oh, so since you're saying that it's determined, the algebra is determined by the um, by the um, um, radius of comparison, and then k zero is sort of fixed. It's, a, it's, it's always a subgroup in this setting. It's always a subgroup of q, so might as well say it's the whole thing. Well, then um, the the um, that means the Quint semigroup is determined just by the single number, and you might. And it's a <coughs> very interesting puzzle, sort of separate from the, a little separate from the classification question. What, perhaps, what, except that, well, what, what is the Quinn semigroup? One reason it's not completely separate is that um, <coughs> for the Villas and algebras, you always get the same simplex in the non um, classically classifiable case, the non Jang to table case. But uh, Elan Hirschberg has, uh, he, he, he's mentioned, that uh, he has an example where the um, uh, su such a an AH algebra with diagonal maps or stable rate one is simple and unital, and the um, and it's not Jang Su stable, and the um, the tracial simplex is uh, is not um, is not uh, the same as, as the other ones. Okay, but it uh, seems it has a face which is the uh, standard the, the standard one which is unique for the Gillison example. Uh, Okay, so much for the abstract. Here, here, here's an abstract of the abstract. <coughs> I'm, I'm throwing this in for free. <coughs> uh, recently, the classification of what might be called well-behaved simple C-star algebras, begun by Glim in 1960, well, that journal of the trans transactions of AMS, that, that issue of the, of the transactions was, uh, I believe it was 1959-60. So it's uh, not quite clear. So I'm just being conservative. Uh, has been um, has been completed in terms of a simple. <coughs> I have to I have to say what well-behaved means, but um, uh, in terms of a simple K-theoretical invariant based on the original type classification of von Neumann algebras by Murray and von Neumann. In other words, comparability of projections. Um, <coughs> Incidentally, uh, 15 years or so ago, um, uh, Dick Caddison uh, published a paper in the um, mathematical reports of the um, of the Academy of Science of Canada. A few, just a few years after the death of Israel Halpern, uh, which was dedicated to him, and uh, pointing out. That he had uh, ascertained with, uh, after a number of discussions, including with von Neumann, <coughs> that um, the the uh, original um, d d discussions in in, in Princeton, um, leading at the beginning of the investigation of uh, of uh, what are now von Neumann algebras, algebras of operators, the the um, uh, the, the discussion centered around um, uh, the, the um, what became the notion of comparability of projection, and uh, at, at one point, von Neumann uh, uh, asked uh, Israel Halpern if if if, uh, if if they if they could incorporate this uh, this idea into their first paper. So Halpern was a beginning student and um, uh, was maybe not it was. Are quite fair. Von Neumann was always considered uh, punctilious about uh, co co authorship. But the, uh, anyway, um, um, and an example in the same footnote is, was um, given of Koopman, who uh, suggested to pointed out to von Neumann if you have a, if you move the uh, rug under a, the graph of a function, then the whole graph moves. Okay. Um, Transformation of the space gives you a linear operator on the functions. Well, then uh, hours after that, uh, von Neumann had the mean ergodic theorem. Okay, but he he um, uh, had he felt he had had to ask uh, Koopman uh, for permission to use the idea. <coughs> well, so very recently. This has been extended to very many of the stable rate one simple C-star algebras of Villison. 
Well, now getting on to the text proper, I have I don't have many pages in these notes. Um, <coughs> besides these classification results, the first one monolithic, summing up an error, and the second uh, striking, shattering any idea the classification is now finished. Teal and collaborators have opened the new chapter. Uh, this is the, this is uh, expanding on the. On the theme. Teal and collaborators have opened a, a new chapter. I put, I put it that way because the first paper was uh, Teal uh, alone, and then his uh, follow up paper going a lot further was um, with um, Antoine Pereira and, um, and Robert. Um, Teal and collaborators have opened a new chapter in the study of general separable C star algebras of stable rank one. <coughs> Namely, in the simple case, <coughs> excuse me, sitting on top of the sub semi group of non compact elements. So the Quint semi group has compact elements, which in the stable rank case are just the classes of projections in the algebra or matrix algebra. And um, and the non-compact elements and everything is the, and the non-compact ones form a, a sub semi group in the simple case, which in the well behaved setting, saying through stable is just a copy of the, um, the lower semi continuous um, extended positive real valued functions on the um, affine functions on the spatial simplex when there's a unit. Otherwise you take the cone uh, and strictly positive if it, is the algebra is simple. Okay, well that's the that's what the quint semi group is, the non-compact elements in the um, um, well-behaved case. But uh, what Thiel discovered, and it was uh, confirmed by the, co the joint work, um, was that the, the, there's always this semi group is always there. Okay, the quint, the quint semi group is not. It, it's only in the well-behaved case that it, um, roughly speaking, only in the well-behaved case classically classifiable case, um, it's amenable, and so on. Uh, it's only in that case that the non-compact elements are exhausted by the af these affine functions, okay? But the affine functions are always there as a sub semi group sitting on top because for any rank, so the rank and the rank map gives you a, an isomorphism onto the affine function to evaluate the points elements, these, these particular points elements at the, um, at the, um, uh, uh, on the trace simplex, you get an arbitrary um, affine function of the kind I, I described. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, and then, so he 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 just constructed them. Uh, he the map on the rank was arbitrary. Okay. He didn't. He showed. Uh, uh, um, well, he raised the question: Is it closed under addition? And the answer is uh, yes. Uh, from the second paper and. Um, and is it closed under increasing soups? Okay, I, I don't have it at my fingertips whether he proved that or it was in the second paper, okay? But it was, um, and furthermore, uh, in the second paper, it's pointed out, I believe in the second paper, it's pointed out that, um, that the, um, that it's, that it's not a sub-object of the Quint semi group. In other words, compact comparison in, these, in this cap sitting on top of uh, affine function Compact, compact uh, containment is um, is not uh, well, which is understood in the aff for affine functions. So we have compact containment in the sense of affine functions, or which is an order isomorphism on the uh, sub proper sub semi group. Uh, we know what the internal compact containment stands for, but it um, amounts to, but it, it, it's, it doesn't. It's not reflected in the in the larger semi group in the quint semi group. Okay. Uh, in general, and uh, in this uh, non-well-behaved case, so so um, okay. But this this uh, so it's a. Uh, but this is this is the this is it seems to me is the beginning of rolling out what the Quint semi group is in the um, non-classifiable uh, non-classically classifiable case, and um, the um, so it's. In the Villison setting, it's always a uh, fixed uh, simplex. So the only variation is um, how these um, 
um, from case to case is how these uh, examples fit together, how, how these examples of the um, affine function semigroup. Well, you, know, the, you, you first, there's an obvious guess that the, there are different layers, okay? You have the, that cap on top. Then the naive guess is that there's a copy of that at all different levels below. And it, it, um, Thiel did prove, Hannes, uh, Thiel did prove that, um, that for each uh, rank, each value of the rank, the um, uh, his uh, lifting of the uh, of the affine function, his choice of his construction of the sequence element with that particular rank, was the um, largest one with that rank. Okay, the largest one in the sequence semi group. You can't you can't define it that way. You can't construct it that way because that's um, that's a uniqueness. Uh, uh, that's uniqueness, uh, obviously, but not uh, existence. All right, but. Um, so, but if there's largest, then why not second largest with a given rank? And there are a whole slew of um, of lower ones with um, with um, with the um, same rank. Well, this is, this is a puzzle, okay? At very, at very, at very least, it's a tantalizing uh, puzzle. Um, <coughs> um, Yeah, well, that's, um, I've got to the end of my notes. Um, okay, so, um, so the, namely in the simple case, sitting on top of the sub-semigroup of non-compact elements is a sub-semigroup which in the well-behaved case would be everything, all the non-compact elements. <coughs> Isomorphic via the rank map to the um, ordered semigroup of um, Strictly positive lower semi continuous extended positive real valued affine function on the trace simplex. We consider the unital case. Um, and, and, um, and the simplex is, is uh, variable, but uh, it's a good question what, what it is. Uh, I mean, how, how variable is it? So if you look at, um, as I mentioned, the example of, of um, uh, VLANs uh, has uh, um, has a sim simplex has a non-empty face, which is the uh, this uh, universal one. Um, this, of course, raises the question of what is sitting below the cap on top. It is tempting to think of just more copies of this familiar ordered semigroup. So the order relation inside the sub group is uh, just pointwise order on the affine function. And uh, if you have a lower level, then it should just be um, something, two things with the same rank, uh, the lower level should actually be lower. That's um, not just with respect to the one on top. And um, so with natural intertwining relations, um, but you, you've got to, um, the radius of comparison has got to come in too. So there, but anyway, it's a, that's a very um, um, that's a that's a very um, um, well in, uh, tantalizing and invigorating um, challenging um, a puzzle I think I, I maybe the um, maybe this is just like the um, maybe this is just I get. I almost get the feeling that this is just like things were uh, when AF algebras were classified. F. F. Ross raised the question of what might happen next. Um, I think meeting um, with homogeneous um, algebras. Is there some possibility of doing that? I think most. I think most people with thumbs down. <coughs> I think few, pe few people, um, I think at every stage, at every stage, there was a barrier, okay? Psychological barrier, it seems. Um, I felt I had to struggle anyway, not, 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 just, uh, not just to prove the theorem. <laughs> okay, but uh, of, of course, there were many, many, there were thousands of pages of theorems and um, how, how many of those thousands of pages did I write? Well, 
uh, I'll, I'll, I'm pretty sure it's at least 1%, okay? Okay. <laughs> I won't try to. <clears throat> All right. Um, so what I, one thing I wanted to do today, just to try to put things in perspective, is, is um, jump up and down a little on the, what I referred to as the, um, the monolithic uh, uh, existing classification result. Um, <coughs> um, that's um, that's that's uh, supposed to remind people of the, the monolith in in um, Kubrick's film in 2001. On the other hand, this didn't get put in place until uh, 15 or 20 years later. <coughs> I suppose 2001 was just a um, sort of a um, imaginary year, like 1984. It was a it was a natural permutation. I understand it was a natural permutation of 1948, which is the year the book was published. In in today's uh, National Post, by the way, there's a, a paragraph by um, Orwell, which was from an introduction, an unpublished introduction of a work of his, where he um, um, talks about um, um, well, if you, if you, um, he didn't use the words, uh, he didn't use the words that are common now, like cancel culture and stuff, but he was pointing out that, uh, that this was already a regrettable, a regrettable incidence of this already, um, quite widespread. <coughs> well, okay, so what is the, um, I'd like to outline the, um, the classification. So, and, and so a, a more down-to-earth word might be monumental. Um, uh, I guess both things are stuck in the uh, stuck in the ground. Um, <coughs> okay. Um, so, um, what does well-behaved mean? Or simple um, system algebra. So mo I'm, I'm sure that most of you will be um, familiar with what I'm going to um, the, the statements I'm going to uh, review. <coughs> um, there's a slight uh, variation um, uh, I'd like to point out, which makes things a little. I think it help, helps underline what's happening, makes or how simple it is. So um, we want um, amenable, separable, amenable. So already a major theorem. <coughs> both have, both implications are major theorems. So amenable in the Banach algebra sense, if you like, or implies um, or that the unitary group is amenable in the weak topology um, as, a, as a topological group. Um, the, the both implications between amenable and nuclear are highly non-trivial. Uh, and uh, separable, um, well, this is, this is the, um, I think it's unnecessary in this room to point out that classification can be, become more complicated even for UHF algebras than the non-separable case. <coughs> I hope you'll forgive me earlier. Okay. <laughs> All right. <coughs> um, and um, by the way, the UHF algebras are a good example of, of what um, of what uh, Sieste algebra classification is not, because in that case, which is very uh, 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 singular, or very special, if you, there's a natural parameter for constructing the algebras, namely the sequences of, uh, of exponents, the prime power uh, order um, matrix algebras. And so the, um, so that's a, and that's a Cantor set. And if you look at the, um, 
UHF algebra, including matrix algebra, finite dimensional ones, for different sequences of point zero one two three up to infinity, and then and that's uh, well, that's a cantor set, and you get a continuous field of C two algebras. If you group them naturally, then it all, it, it's um, if you look at the universal continuous ordinary continuous functions into the universal UHF algebra, then um, the the uh, you at every point then you can say that the um the value is that belongs to the certain sub algebra at every for every uh, uh generalized integer or supernatural number you can look at the um value of the, you require the value of the function to be belonging to the uh, that particular sub algebra of universal one which is sitting in a natural way inside the uh, big one okay so the that, that's the construction that's a very Canonical construction, continuous construction, if you like, depending on a single parameter. But the, the, those are exactly what you see is what you get. Those are the isomorphism classes too. So the the, the Cantor set is what's in, in in algebraic geometry often called the space of moduli. Um, but the classification is smooth, well behaved, and um, and um, so the um, you can talk about the uh, topological space of um, is isomorphism classes. But uh, as Dixney pointed out, this fails as soon as you tensor U UHF algebra by the algebra of compact operators. It's not the, the, um, the isomorphism classes are, well, they're equivalence classes um, uh, in the Cantor set. And the, it's, it's, it, it's, um, it's a non-smooth equivalence relation. So you, you don't want to look at the, you don't want to uh, see the isomorphism class uh, the the space of isomorphism classes but uh, but nevertheless um and and this uh, this is rooted in Dixmier's work you can see it where he refers to the fact that the trace the values of the trace on projections give you the um, determine the Murray von Neumann um, class of a projection the the um, um, well, the, 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 the Dixme is, is pointing out that there's a functorial classification. There's a fu functor defined on these these uh, more general algebras, UHF tensor compact. There's a functor, and um, its value is it's a it's a well. If there's no there's no canonical uh, numerical calculation of it. Okay, because if it's the unital one. Then you can normalize the uh, trace. So you, you know, look at trace as a projection. You get a subgroup of um, of the rational numbers, the same as you you define the rational terms of K zero with the, with the special class of the order unit. Okay, so um, you, all you get is if you look at the K zero group, which is what Dijkstra was doing, you just look at it as an abstract group, and it doesn't make sense to say two abstract groups are equal. Uh, and, you know, the best you can get is isomorphism. And the um, and the, and if you look at the subgroups of the uh, rational numbers, then the isomorphism classes are um, the, the, um, the isomorphism classes are not um, are well behaved. Okay, but um, so it's not a smooth, not a smooth classification. Okay, so you um, so. Um, <coughs> You don't insist so well behaved doesn't doesn't require that the isomorphism classes be um, be parameterizable not nicely parameterizable and um and so the uh, well well now there's a technical condition u c t i won't go into that that's possibly um possibly um um redundant possibly conceivably redundant for amenable separable Algebra. You say separable because the, uh, the formulation is all separability. Um, and um, well, okay. Now, if we're talking about von Neumann algebras, say, um, well, it doesn't matter whether you talk about factors or um, or or not. But it's important that the pre-dual be separable. These things sit on a separable Hilbert space. 
and you want it to be amenable in the phenomenon algebra sense, which says that the um, unitary group in the weak operator topology is uh, amenable in the topological group. And, um, and those algebras are classified by a functor, functor which however is not, uh, it's not a, uh, it's only a functor for isomorphism, but that's good enough, right? <laughs> We just want to classify things into isomorphism. It's an interest, interesting question. I wrote a paper a while ago investigating for what classes of homomorphism between phenomenal algebras, the, um, uh, the flow of weights can be functorial. But, um, <coughs> and and my, my po point for mentioning that is that it's uh, the functor is not only is it um, the, the idea will arise at the same time as for AF algebras, but um, it's almost the same functor, okay? Uh, Khan and, and Takasaki, who were, who, were, who were talking about that, um, said uh, instead of looking at projections, which is what you do for a Seastra algebra, look at uh, functionals and the normal functionals on the Feynman algebra. And then talk about Murray phenomenon equivalence of uh, functionals, okay? Uh, and the, and they're um, not necessarily normalized; they're infinite functionals, certain weights. But uh, and uh, and the um, the um, so you, what's the rest of the invariant? Uh, so you look at the equivalence classes, but then um, if you have a real number, they have to want to get a flow because they want they were constructing the flow of weights which. And examples could be got concretely. You you take a positive functional, not normalized, and you if you have a real number, you can exponentiate it and get a non-zero real number and multiply your um, functional by that, and you, so you get a flow on the equivalence uh, classes of functionals. And this is a, this is it turns out in the in the, in the general phenomenal algebra case is an arbitrary flow on. Um, on a Lebesgue measure space, and um, well, in some cases it'll be a um, single point, a very special case. But um, the, the um, and, and in Sergotic, it's and only if it's back. To, all right, but um, the the um, and the well, it must have been. That the phenomenal algebra case might, must have been easier because it was settled completely two years later. Uh, but the, <laughs> well, look at look at who it was working on. <coughs> All right, but um, the the um, um, the, the Seastra algebra case is only recently um, settled. But notice that what I'm saying here in, uh, applies to the. Um, Vilas and algebras uh, too. <clears throat> They're amenable and um, simple, separable. UCT because they are AH. And um, so, what does well behaved mean? Well, it means that um, um, well, don't forget that uh, there's a very important dichotomy in in um, well, in mathematics as a whole between type one mathematics and non-type one, and in in Seastra algebras between Type one Seastra algebra is a non-type one. And this can be expressed in many different ways. Um, Glim of UHF uh, fame was was also uh, um, important um, a pioneer in clarifying what type one meant. Um, okay, so now it turns out that for um, for um, amenables Lemma uh, algebras, uh, there's no uh, there's no um, subdivision, but um, uh, and they're the same kind. But for amenable Seastra algebras, there's a very robust subclass, analogous perhaps to the type one case, which uh, you, you might, and they pointed out that uh, you might, you might uh, I'm thinking what was some, what, my, my, what might be called the Tom's winter class, all right? They, they, they noticed uh, uh, explicitly that um, that the that existing classification results for, for algebras with a certain property, and in fact more than one property, and they and they um, came up with several properties. I guess 
by definition, is uh, the more different ways of uh, there are of, of formulating a definition equivalently of in non, a non-trivial reformulation. This this is a strong indication, perhaps, of how um, how important the definition is, and certainly how robust it is. But, um, so the Thomas Winter class, if you like, where um, um, of, of amenable vector algebra, preferable amenable one. So this this um, is the one that um, so um, let's say Thomas Winter. Now you have to be a little careful because um, there's the Thomas Winter conjecture that uh, several properties are equivalent, which is almost almost completely settled now, and. Um, um, and there's a class of algebras that, which satisfy the um, condition, have, have this property. So, um, so it's since there are several equivalent ways of saying it, huh? maybe I won't. Um, and, and I guess everyone um, in, the, in the room knows what they are. Um, <coughs> I, I won't um, go into that now, except to point out that the um, well, one one um, in a suitable set setting, one way of stating the, the, the class is that the radius of comparison is that what was introduced by Tom, uh, a quantity that was introduced by Tom. So the radius of comparison is zero. Okay, so um, and we're now <coughs> let's just call it R C equals zero. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. No, uh, I should I should probably um, I should probably uh, devote uh, try try to devote a whole lecture to that, and then I should bow out because I'm maybe not in a position to do it properly. Okay. Uh, so uh, I hope that you're going to talk about it. Oh dear. Okay. Well, there's no. Okay, but I um, don't have that much time left. <laughs> Oh no! Look, uh, there, there's a the Thomas Winter class. So I'll um, I'll put the double brackets around this. Okay, so it's a, it's just a certain setting. It's equivalent. That's one way of stating it. But um, uh, um, no, the um, Stewart is is um, is, um, is beating up on me in a perfectly justifiable way, and I, I apologize for not treating this subject properly and the, and the work which solve, solves the conjecture almost completely. So that, that would be, that would justify a whole course, not, not just a, a whole lecture. Um, <clears throat> and this is just supposed to be um, a, 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 some, somehow a kind of a background, okay? Uh, the, the, um, the, maybe what I should do uh, uh, finally, what I can get away with it is um, 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 talk talk about the um, the, the, the stable rank one results um, <coughs> of, with strong uh, new and the student of Gui Hua Gong's Chun uh, Guang Li. So um, you look at the uh, Villison. So if, if you have a contract, if you have contractible seed space, then you can say something. But um, and um, um, so if the Villison seed space. Um, is um, zero one a finite dimensional cube. Okay. Th then then the then the um I guess all I have to say is the uh, R C is the um and R C is not equal to zero. Then then um this the and and, and say K K zero is equal to Q. Okay. Then um, um 
then the RC is um, not equal to zero, possibly infinite, is uh, complete invariant. And in particular, the, sim the trace simplex is uh, redundant. Now, how, how um, you, might, you might ask about different seed spaces, uh, for even uh, zero, one to the infinity, what happens to zero, one to the infinity? Well, um, for, for an arbitrary contractible space from a finite dimension, and you have to assume there's a little ball container of that dimension. Then there's a sim similar um, theorem. Um, and in, an interesting fact is if you compare two contractible spaces, then the infinite product and uh, the infinite products are the same. It's the same compact metric space. Okay? And so if, if for a given one, you could prove that, um, that the um, infinite product gave you the same. Uh, um, same algebra again, then you'd have that it was true, indi completely independent of the seed space as long as it's um, tractable. Okay, well, uh, maybe I should leave uh, uh, if, if what Stuart um, said is any guide, uh, uh, I should leave time for questions, so maybe I shouldn't, I don't know. But anyway, thank you. <laughs>